Hi, Patrick Pfister, Principal Trombonist of the Omaha Symphony, here to talk to you about tone. In my video aimed at beginners, I talked about listening to great trombonists, getting your horn up with plenty of time so that you can, most importantly, take a full, deep, relaxed breath and then exhale in the same calm manner. Those are, to me, the most fundamental aspects of getting a good tone. And in this video, I'll continue some of those thoughts and touch on some other aspects on how we can improve or change your tone. The trombone is one of the oldest brass instruments, with its earliest use being in church music. This is important because we often think of the trombone today as one of the loudest instruments in an orchestra, or as a member of louder ensembles, such as the jazz band or marching band, but the trombone's voice really comes from chamber music in the church, playing with vocalists and other more subdued instruments, such as the violin or cornetto. Therefore, while it is fantastic to play a modern trombone fortissimo when called for, I find it much more satisfying if we think of the trombone as a singing, beautiful instrument, like the human voice or cello, rather than a paint-peeling weapon of destruction. So, we must listen to some of the great artists to understand what a good tone is. Some of my favorite trombonists include Elaine Trudeau, Michel Bouquet, Achilles Lermacopoulos, Peter Moore, and Ricardo Cosero, or for jazz and commercial playing, Alan Kaplan, Michael Davis, and Marshall Jilks. As a student who has been playing for some time now, hopefully you have started listening to other great brass artists and ensembles, such as the Canadian Brass, Empire Brass, German Brass, or Manassel Brass. Interestingly, growing up and to this day, I listened to far more trumpet recordings than trombone-specific CDs, with Maynard Ferguson, Arturo Sandoval, and Ludwig Gutler shaping many of my ideas as a younger student. Then, throughout college, I started listening to more string and vocal soloists. That is to say, I've had a lot of influences to help shape my sound concept, with trombonists being only a small part. Listen to as many great musicians as you can and try to imitate the qualities that you like about their playing. So, how do we get a good or better tone? After we've spent some time on Spotify, YouTube, or at our local record store, we should have a solid idea of what a good tone is. Now that the mental side is ready, we can address the physical needs for getting a good tone. First, sit or stand up straight with our shoulders back and relaxed. Then, get our horn ready. This means at least a measure or two ahead of an entrance so that we have time to take a full, relaxed breath. Expand in all directions and release the air with the same calmness with which it came in. We want a dense, saturated sound. Think of the air you would use to fog up your glasses. A word or idea that I always come back to is resonance. Imagine you are a classical singer in whatever range of voices, and what does your body, specifically your torso, do to create a more resonant sound? For me, my chest expands in all directions, my throat opens, and my chin drops. We want all these things to happen as we play the trombone as well. The more open and resonant we are, the more full, vibrant, and resonant the tone will be coming out of the horn. Stay as open and relaxed as possible so that you can resonate. You should feel as if you are literally singing through the horn, hearing the music in your head, and singing through your body. Your ear should be doing all of the work with your lips just vibrating. Any excess tension in your chest, throat, hands, stomach, or lips will negatively affect your tone and endurance. This is a huge concept and will take time to become normal. Tension comes to us in a hundred forms every day, so make no mistake about it that every time I pick up the horn, I have to work at being as relaxed and resonant as possible. Now, for two final ideas I'd like to address, equipment and vibrato. One thing I often notice in our side-by-side -side rehearsals with young musicians is that those who do not take lessons are usually still playing on the mouthpiece they started with, generally the equivalent of a Bach 11 or 12 C. This is okay for very young students, but those are jazz mouthpieces, and even by today's standards are really quite small. If you are playing in a concert or marching band or even a jazz band, you will not only get a much richer tone by moving to a bigger mouthpiece, but it will probably help your overall playing if you step up a few sizes. I recommend moving to the equivalent of a box 7C or 6.5L within a year. As your ability progresses and efficiency improves, you should be able to play on a 5G size mouthpiece for concert band or orchestra by late junior high or early high school. This is a very common size used at the professional level, and they come in many variations of cup depths, some of which may be too deep to get a focused sound out of or will be too flat in the high register. Some of the more budget-friendly models uh, brands are Vincent Bach, Denniswick, 
Fax, Shilke, and Yamaha. Shilke and Yamaha use a different numbering system, but there are mouthpiece charts out there to help you compare. Ideally, if you can try them at a music shop, you will be able to feel a brand that is more comfortable on your face, as some have flatter or more rounded rooms, and others that have sounds that you may like more. Ideally, it will be more comfortable and sound better. Essentially, the deeper the cup, the richer the tone will be. The shallower cup, the brighter the tone or more presence it will have. The shallower cup will allow you to play in the high register for longer, but it generally doesn't actually increase your range. It just makes it easier. However, you then sacrifice some tone in the middle and low registers. The other parameter is rim width, with the Bach numbering system indicating 1 is the widest and 22 is the narrowest. A wider rim will create a broader sound, but at some point it may become too big to control or keep focused, becoming weak and airy. The most important factors are how easy a mouthpiece is to play, along with how much resonance or life is in the tone, rather than simply getting larger and larger. For instance, my ideal is right around a 5G, maybe a touch larger, but if I go past a four-sized rim, I lose focus to my sound and some notes will barely even come out. Finally, one last aspect for you to try and improve your tone is using vibrato. As I mentioned at the start, a trombone comes from a vocal background and is the most vocal-like of all the brass instruments. If you want to improve your tone and really impress your listener, almost nothing is more satisfying than a great vibrato. Now, this can only really be used in solo playing because having an entire section of trombones or any brass instrument line up with the vibrato is almost impossible and never sounds right. But if you have any type of solo passage within an ensemble, or working on a concerto, or playing a ballad in jazz band, give it a try. This will take time, but it really shouldn't feel much different than singing with vibrato. That is, unless you use slide vibrato. Slide vibrato nowadays is only used in jazz because of how intense it sounds, but many classical players from the mid 20th century used a more subdued version of it rather than chest or jaw vibrato. Again, listen to great musicians and try to imitate their style. I'm going to leave you with a clip of me playing the melody of Blue Bells of Scotland with a chest or jaw vibrato on a standard mouthpiece. Then, in the second clip, I'll be playing I'm Getting Sentimental Over You with a shallower mouthpiece and slide vibrato. Go check out the original recording of Tommy Dorsey to hear how he puts slide vibrato on practically every note. Thank you for watching and happy practicing.